dedicated to the life and work of Evgeny Oskarovich Paton and Boris Evgenievich Paton, the Patons and the Kyiv Polytechnic Institute. In 1870, while living in the French city of Nice, a son was born into the aristocratic family of the Russian consul Oskar Petrovich Paton. They named him Yevgen, Eugene in English. The young boy's ancestor had faithfully served the Russian throne for several centuries. His grandfather, a Russian general, had even distinguished himself on the battlefield fighting against Napoleon. His godfather was Prince Vyacheslav Romanov, a member of the Tsar's family. At the age of 24, Yevgen Oskarovich Paton graduated from Dresden Technical University, while he could have remained and worked in Europe. He was patriotic and felt the need to return to Russia and pursue his career there. In Russia, however, he was confronted by a major obstacle. Graduation from a foreign university didn't give him the right to work at a government post, not to teach at the university level, both desirable career paths. Even so, Yevgeny Oskarovich Paton was not to be deterred. If he needed to pursue further education at a Russian university, that is what he would do. He petitions the Tsar, who, seeing him as an exceptional case, grants him permissions to pursue retraining in his fatherland. As a result, in 1896, Yevgen Paton graduates from St. Petersburg Institute of Railway Engineers. Initially, he works in St. Petersburg as then in Moscow. The intellect and the talent of the young and promising rail and bridge engineer does not go unnoticed. Yevgen Paton is invited to work in Ukraine at a newly founded Kyiv Polytechnic Institute, whose administration was seeking the finest lecturer specialist available. Paton was invited to participate in an open competition at Kyiv Polytechnic, which resulted in him being accepted unconditionally. In 1904, Yevgen Paton moved to Kyiv. At that time, no one could have imagined that Paton's name would bring worldwide fame to Kyiv Polytechnic University. From April 1905, Yevgeny Oskarovich headed the Department of Bridge Construction at KPI, and a year later he became the Dean of the Engineering Department. At the time, Paton himself noted that training in the Engineering Department was disorganized. None of the systems, teaching, practice and the assessment of student knowledge knowledge and skills were functioning adequately or in unison. And yet Paton was able to institute a meaningful and necessary reorganization which has withstood the test of time. His style of teaching was unique. He accepted work orders from industry and students, participated in the implementation of these orders, they found it difficult to adapt to Paton's high standards. He was exacting, adhered to fundamental principles and his students considered him to be a very rigorous and strict teacher. Paton's knowledge was profound and deep-rooted and he expected no less from his students. In general, students tended to fear him, but most of all, they respected him. As a demanding teacher, he would not use the prevalent examination method, in which a student selects a ticket and then has to give a satisfactory answer to the question on the back in order to pass the course and receive a grade. Paton's examination method was more demanding. On average, he had no more than five students per day for an examination and sometimes an examination lasted five hours. Each student was required to demonstrate a thorough knowledge of the material covered throughout the course. Paton believed that the specialist should know everything. The Paton family lived on the campus of KPI, here in this building where classes were taught. And here were born Paton's two sons, Vladimir and Boris. Welcome, please come in. You are in the apartment where Evgeny Paton lived and where his two sons were born. This house was planned for professors of KPI. In Soviet times there were many housing modifications and even communal apartments. However, this structural half meter thick walls remember the times when the Paton family lived here. Here Yevhen Paton raises his son, teaches students, builds bridges, and here he becomes the best in this industry. 
Evgeny Paton started the motor engineering section at KPI. It later became a department. KPI is grateful to Paton for starting a museum of engineering, which later became the model for the present Polytechnic Museum. In Kyiv, Evgen Paton built several bridges. One of the first was a pedestrian bridge known as a Lover's Bridge. In 1920, the Polish army, while in retreat from Ukraine, blew up the Nikolaev chain bridge across the Dnipro river. It was not restored. Instead, it was decided that a new one should be built, and Yevgen Paton was an active participant in the creation of the new bridge. Initially, there was a major problem in building the bridge. There was no metal available to create a new bridge. Again, proving his ingenuity, Evgeny Oskarovich became famous for the fact that he did manage to build a new bridge. He had all the metal at the bottom of the Dnipro river collected, and from this assembled metal, factories in Kyiv were able to create and assemble a new bridge. In 1925, the bridge, named after the indomitable revolutionary Evgeny Bosch, again connected the right and the left banks of the Dnipro. Boris Paton described the day there was a very festive grand opening of this new chain bridge in Kyiv. Many people came and it was special. A brass band played and I with my friends drove across the bridge by tram. This event has been preserved in my memory ever since. Three years later, while testing a bridge in the Kyiv region, Yevgen Paton became acquainted with an arc welding technique, which was beginning to change history. Notably, welding was beginning to be used for building bridges. Paton immediately realized that this was a promising method for the creation of the metal structures, and he decided to prove that the welded structure was stronger than the reverted type. At the time when Evgeny Paton started welding, it was an art form, rather than a well-developed industrial technology. As dean of the Department of Bridge Building at KPI, Paton quickly realized that for building load-bearing structures, welding had greater promise than riveted joints. Following his initiative, KPI began to train welders. Having proven the advantage of welding, Paton proposes that KPI create a department of welding production. In 1935 his proposal is accepted, and by 1936 the department is functional. Its first dean and guiding light is Evgeny Paton. Later, Evgen Paton established an electric welding laboratory, which five years later was developed into an institute. The population and size of Kiev keep growing, and our ingenious scientist comes up with an idea of building a solid welded bridge across the Dnipro river. It would be longer than the Khrushchev, the central thoroughfare of Kiev. Skeptics called it madness. The plans, however, were thwarted by war. On the day war broke out, Boris Paton's younger son was to defend his diploma at KPI. When we got to KPI in the morning, bombing had started, and we were so unprepared that we hid from the bombing in the entryway. Thank God we survived there and got to KPI. At KPI we were ready to defend the CZ's projects and defended them successfully. Boris Paton had a choice. At that time, as a son of a well-known engineer, he could study in Moscow or St. Petersburg, but he chose KPI. I was at KPI from the time I was in diapers and I wanted to study there. I attended KPI and I have no regrets. And I am very grateful to the Kyiv Polytechnic Institute for the fact that this institute continues those traditions that were laid down in it even in serious times. Boris Paton was a very gifted student, but he was prevented from getting the preferred red diploma because of low grade in Marxism-Leninism. In my third year at KPI, in all my subjects, I received the highest grade, a 5, except for a single 2. Yes, this 2 was in Marxism-Leninism. I was forced to study this subject. 
there was no way out of it. I took the course, but the two prevented me from receiving a red diploma. I was attracted to technology and engineering, but the social sciences didn't really interest me. I was a very diligent student. I was extremely well prepared for academic disciplines, requiring descriptive geometry. For example, I solved close to 600 problems before even taking the exam. In 1941, at the beginning of the war, the Institute of Electric Welding, with all its workers and equipment, was evacuated to Nizhny Tagil. Paton's sons went with their father. The war effort was catastrophically lacking in tanks, though welding was done manually by experienced welders. One tank took a minimum of 10 hours to assemble. The other workers in the factory were mostly women and children. Manual welding was slow and gaps were too frequent. They couldn't manage. Then suddenly Paton proposes a new technological method not used anywhere else in the world. Yevgen Paton proposes switching from manual to automatic welding. And to do this, he creates the world's first high-speed armor welding machine. However, the management of factory was not in a hurry to take up a new method. The management objected. Imagine disrupting tank production in the middle of a war. Factory workers also objected, and it was not until Vyacheslav Malyshev, the People's Commissar of Heavy Machines and Tank Building, intervened and ordered them to try. Paton first devised an experiment. One side of a tank was welded by hand, and the other was welded using flux. Both sides were then shelled. The first hand-welded side cracked and broke very badly. The other side, a submerged aqua-welded plate, was not damaged at all. Based on this experiment, a decision was made to allow the production of T-34 tanks using submerged aqua-welding with flux. How did this change make an impact on the factory? Welding speed was now 10 times faster. And as for operating the automation, young, inexperienced workers could control the machines. They just had to press the start and stop buttons. The world's first conveyor production of Soviet T-34 tanks began, and these tanks were being released 10 times faster than before. As a result, the Ural train car factory, which was now a tank factory, set a new record for the number of tanks completed in a single day – 35 type T-34 tanks, a new record in tank construction. Paton's technology was introduced at various factories and was used not only in the production of tanks, but also in aircraft and shells. Later, historians would say that this technology helped win the war. There is no doubt that the Baton Institute made a substantial and significant contribution to our victory. Baton was the first Ukrainian academician to be named the hero of socialist labor and awarded the Stalin Prize. Later, in times of Soviet repression, at the Baton Institute no one suffered. Such was the respect for Baton. One time Evgeny Paton was summoned to the Central Committee of the Soviet Union for a meeting that had absolutely nothing to do with him. He said he sat quietly distressed. Then he just got up and left. This was scandalous behavior, and the committee immediately brought this matter to the attention of Nikita Sergeyevich Khrushchev. Khrushchev looked at them and said, well, he did the right thing when he left. Yevhen Paton was very demanding, both in regard to himself and his subordinates, but he was also attentive and fair in his actions and dealings. He was honest and just, and it really could be said that he was a kind person. Whenever he could, he helped people, both in life and in their work. For this, among themselves, the Patonists call him Butter, Father. A month of working with him was like a year. Paton had a daily routine. He arrives at the institute, inspects the garages and starts walking through the workshop area. At 9 a.m. everyone was supposed to be at their own specific workstations. He passes through, reviewing each area and sometimes comments, aha, this is a young group, and what are you doing? I'm working on steel technology. 
And how is it going? So far successfully. Work hard. I wish you success. It is significant that he always used a respectful form when addressing workers. This conveyed a noteworthy sense of egalitarianism between him and his workers. Built in 1943, this unique bridge has become a symbol of Kyiv and the crowning achievement of Yevhen Oskarich Paton's genius. At the time this bridge set a precedent and was an exemplar. This was revolutionary technology. There were no similar structures, neither in the Soviet Union nor in the world. Also, at that time it was the longest bridge in all of Europe. In creating this bridge, academician Paton fulfilled the dream of his life. He has combined the two major focuses of his life's work – bridge construction and welding. However, he did not get to see cars going across the world's first all-welded bridge. Sadly, he died three months before the opening. Up to the very last he had walked with his stick and watched how the work was progressing. He said that this bridge would be the pinnacle of his life's work. Boris Paton, the son of the great scientist, was the first person who sped across the bridge in his car. Significantly, he also continued the work of his father. He has been president of the National Academy of Science of Ukraine for over 57 years, and he is also the director of the Institute of Electric Welding. He boldly began to use energy sources that had been specifically devised only for welding. It is due to Boris Paton that mankind has learned to weld metal in space. In 1984, for three and a half hours in open space with equipment created at the Institute of Electric Welding, the cosmonauts, a woman, Savitskaya and a man, Jenny Bekov, performed soldering, welding, cutting and coating. This was a significant first in space. So far, no one else has repeated this experiment in space. To weld in space, this was our idea and it was supported by Sergei Korolev, the father of space travel. After us, the Americans became interested and they entered into a $2 million contract with us. A hydraulic pool was specially built to conduct an experiment to simulate weightlessness. And then after that another experiment. The Americans were also supposed to have us release an astronaut into outer space. Suddenly they informed us that they were reneging. They told the public that they could not proceed further and that this could end in tragedy. I then told them that we love our women very much and that we would never have agreed to an experiment in outer space if we could not guarantee the safety of the flight. As a consequence of their decision, the Americans have not conducted such an experiment in space, and so now it is in collaboration with the Chinese government that we are proceeding with another welding experiment in outer space. Boris Paton not only revolutionized welding technology, he completely overturned all our conception about this science. What he did with the metal, he began to do with the living tissue. I really liked water skiing and then I had an accident. I fell and as it turned out I broke my hip joint. After the operation, Boris Paton learned that the hip bone had been cut mechanically with a scalpel and then he came up with an idea, why not to do it with a laser? His technology of welding living tissues exceeded doctor's expectations. Thousands of medical trials using lasers were started under Boris Paton's initiative and guidance. Today such methods are being utilized in over a hundred clinics and hospitals in Ukraine. These methods dramatically reduce blood loss during surgery. They also dramatically reduce the number of complications. In addition, surgery is three times faster. At the Institute of Electric Welding, under the guidance of our eminent scientist Boris Paton, the 3D technology of growing super-large single crystal of tungsten was successfully achieved for the first time in the world. A giant was grown here. A single cylindrical shaped crystal with a diameter of 85 mm, the largest in the world. In the whole world, there is no comparable equivalent to the work done in the Department of Plasma Slag Metallurgy. 
There are no such technologies and no such products. We are the only ones who grow such metals. This is very sophisticated technological equipment that can also be utilized as mirrors for extra-large lasers and crossables for growing exotic crystals. Yes, Boris Evgenievich Paton always foresees what can be done and how it will proceed. Boris Paton is a legend. He has 400 unique inventions behind him. Furthermore, he is known and respected around the world. Boris Evgenievich is a unique person, an outstanding scientist, a talented organizer, a teacher who has disseminated and inculcated the Paton School throughout the world and made it famous. We are genuinely happy that we have been working with such a personage. Boris Evgenievich will go down in the history of science and of Ukraine, and he will have set an example for many young scientists to come. Boris Paton never forgot about his alma mater, Kyiv Polytechnic Institute. He says that along with basic research, at KPI new research is constantly coming to fruition, new departments are evolving, KPI is a forge that hammers out academic leaders and I am very glad that my life and destiny have been connected with KPI. KPI continues the traditions of the Paton family. It continues to demonstrate high educational standards and at KPI theory is always coupled with practice. To this day we strive to preserve the basic principles laid down by Evgeny Oskarovich Paton during his leadership of the department. Paton emphasized responsibility first and then the essential rigor of knowledge coupled with practical application. Only with such a strong, integrated approach are we able to develop quality specialists. The welding department at KPI has been successfully training international welding engineers and technologists for over 10 years. They come from China, Israel, Belarus and the Baltic states from all over the world to earn their graduate and undergraduate science and engineers diplomas at KPI. The Paton family has glorified our university with their great achievements. And indeed the university as a community regards the Patons with love and the deepest respect. We are proud of their great accomplishments, which have unquestionably enhanced and magnified the achievements and world renown of Kyiv Polytechnic Institute. The Patons, Yevgen Oskarovich and Boris Evgenievich, have been leaders at KPI and have laid the foundations of this university for excellence in scientific and engineering studies and training over the last century. The National Technical University of Ukraine, Igor Sikorsky, Kyiv Polytechnic Institute, today trains engineering specialists in 42 fields of study and 168 program subject areas. Just to name several, electrical, mechanical, chemical engineering, informatics and computer science, communications, biomedical engineering, aeronautical engineering and many other areas. It is with the greatest of hope that I look upon our talented youth.